The western coast of the United States is densely populated, housing over 50 million Americans from San Diego and Los Angeles in the south to San Francisco and Sacramento in California, and extending further north to Portland and Seattle in the Pacific Northwest. Despite the overall populous nature of the region, there exists a vast and predominantly uninhabited area in the middle of the west coast. So, why aren't there more people living in the empty areas of the West Coast, especially considering the densely populated cities surrounding them? Hello and welcome to our channel. Today, we're checking out a part of the West Coast in the U.S. where not many folks live. It's a bit strange because if you look to the South, California has a ton of people, over 40 million. And up North, you've got big cities like Portland and Seattle. But right in the middle, not many people choose to live here despite the overall populous nature of the region. So, why aren't there more people living in the empty areas of the West Coast, especially considering the densely populated cities surrounding them? There's a good reason for that, but before we get into it, I want to ask you to subscribe. If you subscribe for membership, you'll be able to see the content in advance. So, join us. To the untamed expanses of America's empty West Coast, where history unfolds like a captivating tale of migrations, conflicts, and a unique regional identity. In the mid-19th century, the gold rush fever swept through central California, painting a picture of prosperity and dreams. But as the dust settled, the northern reaches of California and southern Oregon stood untouched, holding on to a distinct identity of their own. Imagine a time when the hills echoed with the pursuit of gold in the south, while the north remained a haven, untouched by the chaos. Yet this prosperity came at a cost. The indigenous communities faced displacement and conflict, leaving a mark that resonates through time, notably in the pages of the Rogue River War of 1855. In the aftermath, Resilient settlers saw potential in the region's natural bounty. They built a foundation for a unique identity that would later find its voice in the calls for independence. The spirit of autonomy, embodied in proposals like the state of Jefferson, echoed through the 19th century and echoed as recently as 2014. The region's residents sought self-governance, driven by a belief that their rural values were inadequately represented. This quest for independence wasn't a relic of the past. It was a living connection to the land. The people of this region, proud of their heritage, stood against policies dictated by distant capitals, weaving a cultural tapestry shaped by rugged landscapes and a sense of abandonment. Join us on this exploration as we navigate the historical currents that have shaped America's empty west coast. Discover a story where conflicts and struggles of the past reverberate through vast valleys and untamed terrains. Subscribe to our journey, and together, let's uncover the hidden chapters of a region shaped by its unique history and resilient spirit. Subscribe now and be part of the adventure. Geographical Factors Let's take a simple stroll through history to uncover the secrets locked in the landscape. Picture this vast national and state forests spreading like a green blanket, limiting the space for big neighborhoods and highways. The challenge doesn't stop there. Think about trying to build a town right in the shadow of Mount Shasta, the second highest peak in the Cascades. It's not just tall. It's an active volcano, making settling there more of a daydream than a reality. And then there's Crater Lake in southern Oregon, a massive volcanic crater that goes deep into the earth. It's like nature's grand masterpiece, but it doesn't exactly scream build a city here. These natural wonders attract adventurers, but they're not so friendly to large-scale cities. Now, compare this to the eastern side of the region, where the Great Basin sits with its arid climate. It's a bit like the difference between a desert and a lush forest. The east might have potential for big cities, but our west coast is a rugged land, rocky and tough, making it tricky for ports and trade centers to set up shop. As if the land wasn't throwing enough challenges our way, climate change and rising sea levels are knocking on the door. Coastal areas are feeling the heat, quite literally. 
Yet here on the West Coast, our tough terrain keeps us on the sidelines, caught between the changes in the climate and the echoes of our challenging history. So, dear explorers, as we delve into this tale of mountains, volcanoes, and resilient landscapes, remember to hit that subscribe button. Join us in uncovering the mysteries of Northern California and Southern Oregon, where history and geography dance hand in hand, creating a unique story that's etched in the very fabric of the land. Together, let's explore the untamed beauty and navigate the challenges that make this region truly one of a kind. Ever wondered about the untold story of the economic heartbeat nestled between the vibrant cities of Northern California and Southern Oregon? Economics, realities. Imagine wide open spaces, peaceful coastlines, and a distinct character that sets Northern California and Southern Oregon apart. Let's go back a little to figure out how this area has changed over time. In this corner of the West Coast, where the hustle and bustle of big cities fade away, we find a different rhythm. While coastal areas to the north and south thrive economically, our focus remains on a more tranquil, often overlooked expanse. The economic vigor seen in bustling cities seems to skip this unique piece of the puzzle. Zoom in and you'll discover that in 2020, a mere 484,127 individuals spread across 21,349.76 square miles called this place home. To put it in perspective, if this area were its own state, it would contend for the lowest population density in the nation. That's like having your own quiet haven amidst the hustle. Eugene, Oregon, takes the spotlight as the largest city boasting a population of 177, 923. Yet, unlike the towering skyscrapers found elsewhere, our region lacks bustling urban centers. Instead, we witness the rise of Bend, a city that's not just growing but flourishing. Nestled along the Deschutes River, it symbolizes our love for the great outdoors. The Deschutes River isn't just a scenic waterway. It's a symbol of our region's allure for outdoor enthusiasts. Logging, outdoor sports, and recreation define our economic landscape. It's not just about the economy here. It's about a way of life shaped by the rivers, forests, and mountains that surround us. Yet, the absence of towering skyscrapers and the dominance of outdoor-centric lifestyles make us a bit of an economic outlier. Our region, carved by unique factors, stands as a distinct thread in the intricate economic tapestry of the United States. Cultural influences, this isn't just a story. It's a journey into a world defined by rugged terrains and boundless wilderness. It's a tale of a cultural identity that refuses to be overshadowed or misunderstood, a sentiment that has even given rise to discussions of secession and independence. Let's rewind to the mid-19th century, where the idea of the state of Jefferson first took root. Back then, there was a conviction that the region's culture and values clashed with the decision-making processes that favored the urban centers. Fast forward to 1941, and you find individuals declaring a patriotic rebellion against the states of California and Oregon, a bold move to assert their independence. The struggle for autonomy has seen its ebbs and flows over the years, reaching a pivotal moment in 2014 when a majority voted in favor of forming the state of Jefferson. The symbol of this cultural distinction proudly waves in the form of a flag, featuring a gold mining pan and double crosses, a visual testament to the region's unique identity and its quest for a governance that truly represents its people. Factors Contributing to Low Population Join us on a voyage through the untamed stretch between Portland and San Francisco, where a region unlike the typical bustle of the West Coast reveals itself. Envision a place where history, land, and culture weave together to form a unique identity in Northern California and Southern Oregon. Picture vast landscapes dominated by national and state forests a natural fortress resisting the invasion of urban sprawl. Mountains like the majestic Mount Shasta and the mysterious crater cultural influences 
Imagine a big painting filled with love for wild and open spaces, totally different from busy cities. The few people living here are proud of their history and feel a special bond with the land that makes them unique. Yet, the story is not without its conflicts. The people here often feel overlooked by the distant political centers, sparking tensions as they strive to protect their way of life from perceived interference. This cultural identity becomes a driving force, sparking discussions of secession and independence. The roots of the state of Jefferson, an idea dating back to the mid-19th century, emerge from a belief that the region's culture and values clash with the decision-making processes favoring urban centers. The desire for autonomy culminated in 1941 with a patriotic rebellion against California and Oregon, and the idea has resurfaced over the years. In 2014, a significant step was taken with a majority vote in favor of forming the state of Jefferson. The distinct cultural identity is symbolized by the state of Jefferson flag, adorned with a gold mining pan and double crosses, reflecting the region's unique character and its quest for a more representative form of governance. Join us on this exploration of cultural influences that have shaped the fabric of Northern California and Southern Oregon. Subscribe to our channel to unravel the layers of this captivating narrative and be a part of understanding the region's distinctive identity. Lakes stand not just as scenic wonders, but as barriers, limiting the canvas for towns to emerge. Protected lands, with their strict rules, safeguard the area from extensive development, preserving its rugged beauty. Delve into the past, where the echoes of the Gold Rush and the Oregon Trail reverberate in settlement patterns. The Oregon Trail paved the way for migration into Oregon. But the northern expanses of California and southern Oregon experienced a more measured growth, untouched by major gold rushes and lacking easily accessible routes. Witness the challenges etched into the landscape where infrastructure struggles to keep pace with the demanding geography. While technology now allows the construction of roads and railways, the region grapples with the consequences of historical neglect. Inadequate transportation networks persist, hindering accessibility to fertile lands like the Rogue Valley, unable to fully support larger populations. Feel the heartbeat of the people, proud of their roots, navigating a unique cultural identity that shapes population dynamics. Residents, deeply connected to their heritage, sense a disconnection from urban hubs, sparking movements like the State of Jefferson proposal. Here, the struggle for representation and a commitment to preserving a rural lifestyle present both challenges and opportunities, defining the essence of Northern California and Southern Oregon, the State of Jefferson. Picture a special place in the wide expanses of Northern California and Southern Oregon, the state of Jefferson. It's more than just a spot on the map. It's a blend of history and culture that has grown over time. This unique identity is not just about geography. It's a story shaped by a desire for self-rule, where people yearn for a political entity that understands and meets their values and needs. The story begins in the mid-19th century, when the gold rush brought settlers to the Klamath River Basin, setting the stage for a complex interplay of cultures. Conflicts with indigenous populations underscored the tensions shaping the region's course. As early as 1852, there were proposals like the state of Shasta, gaining momentum alongside the idea of the state of Jefferson in 1855. Residents felt a distinct cultural departure from California and Oregon, fueled by the belief that a locally governed territory could better address their unique rural needs. Though setbacks arose during the Civil War and later events like World War II shifted priorities, the dream of the state of Jefferson persisted. In 1941, a patriotic rebellion was declared, complete with the inauguration of a governor. Post-World War II, 
discussions resurfaced, marked by movements in the 1990s and a significant advisory vote in 2014 where the majority expressed support for secession. Legal battles ensued, challenging state-imposed limitations on the region's self-governance. Symbolized by a flag featuring a gold mining pan and two X, embodying a sense of abandonment, the State of Jefferson movement encapsulates a deep yearning for recognition and representation. The struggles and victories of this movement reflect the intricate dance of history, geography, economics, and culture that shapes the destiny of Northern California and Southern Oregon. Conclusion In the expansive and lightly populated stretches of Northern California and Southern Oregon, a fascinating narrative unfolds weaving together geographical hurdles, historical legacies, economic subtleties, and cultural pride. From towering mountain ranges and protected lands shaping the landscape to the reverberations of gold rushes and clashes with indigenous communities, this region stands as a distinctive and frequently underestimated corner of the West Coast. The economic realities of limited industries and trade centers, coupled with the distinct cultural identity of the inhabitants, have contributed to a slower pace of development compared to the bustling cities surrounding it. The concept of the state of Jefferson, rooted in a desire for local governance and representation, further underscores the complex relationship between this region and the states it belongs to. As we explore the factors contributing to the low population density in this part of the West Coast, we unravel a story of resilience, pride, and an enduring spirit that seeks to define its own narrative. The empty spaces on the map are not just geographical gaps, but arenas where the intricate interplay of history, geography, economy, and culture continues to shape the identity of Northern California and Southern Oregon. Thank you for watching. If you found this video informative, please give us a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more insightful videos on history and current events.